Hello there, Michelle Short here for My Favourite Things. Today I have a clean and simple winter card to share with you using the Berry Special set from the November release. So let's get started. I'm starting off by taking the larger of the bear from the Berry Special stamp set and I'm going to stamp it down onto some smooth white cardstock using black ink. There are two more bears in the set and they're just absolutely adorable but I decided to go for a really clean and simple card today and just thought I'd use the one image. I think he is so so cute. I am going to stamp it twice just so that I get a really nice dark impression for the outlines. I'm then going to colour the image with Copic markers. So I'm going for a polar bear here and generally polar bears are fairly quite light in colour. Most of them kind of read as that they're white. The difficulty with colouring white is that you need a colour to be able to make it look like white. So you need some kind of shading on the image. It's quite good using greys for you know colouring white but you could also colour it with a colour that you're using in the background maybe so for example I'm using turquoise or aqua in the background so I could colour the bear with that colour as well and it would just kind of look like he was having some reflections from the background which would happen in real life but because polar bears quite often have more of like a beigey tone to them I thought I would use some of these earth colours here in the Copic marker collection so I am started off by mapping out my darkest areas with the E53. At that point, I didn't know if that was going to be my darkest shade or not. I do end up going back in and adding a darker shade on top of it. But for the time being, I'm blending out with the E51. And then here I'm going in with the E50 and blending that out further. And then at this point, I did decide that I did want some of the darkest areas to be a little bit more dark. So I'm using the E55 and I'm just going around the kind of outside edges, I suppose, and where I think it would be darker. So behind his scarf and then inside the leg portions. And then on his side of his face there where it meets the scarf. And then because E55 and E53 don't always play very nicely together, quite often they can kind of turn a little bit green, which is definitely not what I wanted for the bear. So I'm going in with the E51 to try and blend that out. Sometimes this does a good job and sometimes it doesn't. But when you first kind of blend it together, it really doesn't look like it's doing anything. But you can leave it for a little while and then sometimes it just kind of magically blends together. I know that sounds really weird, but I do go in with the E50 and blend that out further as well. I then want the E50 to blend to white because I do want some of this area left completely white so that it looks more like the kind of brown colours are the shadows and he's kind of most of his fur would be white. So the colourless blender has got a weird name because it sounds like it's going to blend colours together but actually it just lightens colours. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of going over where the E50 is to try and blend it out to white and again it is one of those things that you kind of have to leave for a little while to see what it looks like because you're kind of saturating the paper with alcohol it does sometimes take a little while to evaporate and get the true colour I do go back in with the E50 in a few areas because I do think it blended out a little bit too much and then I go back in with the zero and try and blend that line out so that it's not too harsh I'm then going back in with the E51 and just blending those darkest areas a little bit more. And then for his scarf, I'm using BG49. And again, I'm mapping out the darkest areas first. 
I wanted it to match the background and so that's why I thought I would use the aqua kind of turquoisey colours. So I used BG13, BG11 and BG10 and then I'm going back in again with the BG49 just to really darken up those darker areas. And then for his nose I'm using C10, C7 and C5 and then I also use those shades on the inside of his ears as well. And then to just darken up the darker areas even more, I'm taking a back polychromos pencil and I'm just going over the darkest areas with that. I'm being really light handed here because I don't want it to really look like it's black. I just want to darken up those areas a little bit more. So I'm just going around all the places that I think are the darkest areas just to add a little bit more contrast onto the image. I'm then taking the very special dynamics and I've taken the coordinating die, placed that over the image and then I'm holding it down with some low tack tape. I'm then going to run that through my die cutting machine. So I can just pop that out at the other side and then I just think he's so so cute. For my background, I've taken a panel of white cardstock that's cut to four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches, and I've got the Drifts and Hills stencil here, and I'm just working out where I want that to be placed so that I can create a ground for him. I'm technically not creating a ground, I'm creating a sky, but you'll see that when the stencil gets removed, it automatically creates a ground like a snowbank, um, but I'm literally just adding the colour for the sky instead. So I'm taking Peacock Feathers Distress Ink and I'm just adding a small amount of that above where that snowbank will be. I'm kind of building up the colour as I go along. I want it to be darkest towards the bottom and sort of fade out to white at the sides and at the top. I am bringing it in the bare here so that I can make sure that you can see enough of that colour around him. But I didn't want to cover the entire portion of the top of the panel. I wanted to keep this card quite airy, but I do think it would look quite nice doing that as well. I've then placed my panel back in the Mini Misty and I've got some removable adhesive onto the back of the bear and I'm just placing him down onto the panel so that I can see where I want to stamp my sentiment. So I'm taking the Sending Bear Hug Sentiment from the Berry Special Stamp Set. I can place that below him and then just figure out exactly where I want the sentiment to be stamped. I can close the door of the Misty and then I'm going to bring in a piece of plastic here. This is so that I can stamp my sentiment down, make sure that it's straight before I actually stamp it down onto the panel. So I'm inking that up with some ink. It doesn't really matter which ink I use at this point. I'm just making sure that that's straight and it's centered. And I think it is, so I'm going to remove that plastic and then I can stamp the sentiment down onto the panel. I am going to stamp it twice just so that I get a really nice dark impression. Although I think the background looks really nice, just kind of plain and simple, I wanted to add a little bit of detail on it. I thought it would look quite cute to add some snowflakes. So I'm taking two snowflakes from the Holly Jolly Santa stamp set and I've brought it in that piece of plastic again just so that I can place the images down. So again, I can see where I want to stamp them before I actually stamp them. So I'm kind of just moving them about, seeing exactly where I think I want them to be placed. This did take me a little while, I'm not going to lie, trying to figure out exactly where I think I want them to be. In the end, I'm not sure that I really loved the placement of them. I think they're nice being in the sky, it just adds something a little bit different. But I think it might have been nicer if I'd added a few more. I ended up just adding the three. I think it would have looked quite nice if I'd added the five. I do think it would have looked quite nice as well if I'd added tons of them and kind of made like a snow flurry background. I think that that would look really nice. But I am going for more of an airy, clean and simple look here. So I'm just stamping those down with the Peacock Feathers Distress Ink because I wanted them to be fairly subtle. But I am just double stamping them to make sure that they are dark enough. I'm then taking that panel and I'm adding some tape runner adhesive on the back. 
making sure that I'm really covering that well with the adhesive. I want to make sure that this is going to stick down really nicely onto my card base and that's a a2 size card base so that's a finished size of four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches and then I'm just trying to line them both up as best as possible and then once I think they're lined up I'm going to take a bone folder and just really press down those edges I've then added some foam tape onto the back of the bear and then I can adhere him down onto the card once I'm happy with the placement, I can press him down. I then want to add a little bit of sparkle onto his nose. So I'm using a clear glaze pen. And then I'm adding small dabs of on-point precision glue into the centres of the snowflakes. So I'm just rotating the card here because it's just a little bit easier for me to get the nozzle of the glue kind of underneath where he's, the top of his back is. And then I can pop some iridescent bubbles into the centers of those snowflakes. It's just, again, gonna add a little bit of extra shimmer and shine onto the card. It's, a, like I said, very clean and simple card, but I think these added touches do make quite a big difference. So just popping the last one there and that is the card finished for today like I said really clean and simple I do think it would have looked nice in hindsight to add a few more snowflakes but it's always quite difficult with clean and simple cards to know how much to add or to not add. Thank you so much for joining me today I hope you've enjoyed watching and I wish you a wonderful day.